بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. So quick reflection based on one verse again um, in Surah number seven verse sixteen. Allah shares a conversation with an unlikely uh, being. And I wanted to focus on one thing that that uh, individual said. And it's talking about a reality. And then I want to compare that with another statement. So there are two statements describing the same reality. And that reality is the fact that the majority of human beings are not grateful. They're disbelievers. The majority of the human race has not believed in Allah Azza wa Jal, and recognized his signs or grateful for his blessings. So this is a fact. We know that from human history and we know that from texts. Um, we know that in the Quran. The majority of them do not believe except with shirk, the associating partners. So this story is when Allah created Adam, and the whole story towards the end, Allah had a conversation with Iblis. So this statement is a statement of Iblis. So Iblis, he asked Allah for some time um, before punishment. So Allah gave him time until the day of judgment. And then Iblis made a promise and he made a statement. His promise was, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ سِرَاطَكَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ he said, I will be waiting for them on the straight path. So this is happening right after Adam was created. And Adam ate from the tree. Shaitan deluded him. And now Adam's fate is to live in this earth. So Shaitan says, I will be waiting for him, for them. Who is he talking about? Bani Adam, the human race. And then he said, ثُمَّ لَآتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ I will come to them from the front, from the back, from the right, from the left. I will approach them from every angle. So this is Iblis' promise, that he's not going to leave humanity alone, but he's going to approach them in every, from every angle possible. And then at the end, he says one statement. He says, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ He says, you will not find the majority of them accept that they are not grateful. وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ So here we learn shukr, gratitude is the essence of iman. That really is what iman is. Iman, when you believe in Allah, you basically recognize all the blessings that you enjoy. And the opposite of gratitude or shukr in Arabic is kufr. The exact opposite of shukr is kufr. So these are the two extremes. Shukr is you recognize you're grateful for Allah's blessings, and kufr is not being grateful. And that's why a kafir, a disbeliever, that's, that's the term we use, because in essence, a person who disbelieves in Allah does not recognize Allah's favors upon him. Anyway, Iblis says is this, the majority of the human race will not be shakirin. There will not be people who are grateful. Now, Allah says the same thing, he talks about the same reality. Again, keep in mind the reality. Majority of human beings will not believe. They're not grateful. So this is what shaitan says. Allah says the same reality but with different words. And I want you to think about the words of Allah and compare them with the words of Iblis. So Allah says in the surah where he says, I'malu ala Dawood a shukra. O people of Dawood, family of Dawood, be grateful to Allah. And Allah says something, He says, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورُ He says, how few from my servants are those who are shakur, truly grateful. Shakur is different from shakir. Shakir is being grateful. Shakur is an exaggeration of that. It means to be extremely grateful, to be above and beyond the quality of gratefulness. So now think about these two statements. The reality is the same. So Iblis said this, وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ How did Iblis know? He was just making an estimation. It was a dhan from him. Iblis didn't know the future, but based on what he knew of Adam, how he succeeded with Adam, he knew the qualities, he kind of had a sense. 
So he had an estimation. That's why Allah says in another verse, and it's very interesting, وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ فَاتَّبَعُوهُمْ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ This is very strange. We say Sadaqa Allah, truthful is Allah, right? But Allah uses Sadaqa with Iblis. وَلَقَدْ صَدَّقَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِبْلِيسُ ظَنَّهُ Iblis's estimation of the human race was true. This is Allah speaking. So what Iblis said was not untruthful. It was, it was accurate. He was right. But now when Allah speaks about the same reality, look at how Allah speaks. So you have the majority, you have the minority. You have the, the large and you have the few. The large number and the few. Iblis, he highlights the large number. He highlights those who are not going to be grateful. And his statement begins with negative. And it's like a promise and it has harshness. Allah, when he says it, you can, when you look at his words, they're filled with mercy. Allah doesn't care about the majority who are disbelieving. He's highlighting the qaleel, the few who are truly grateful. And Allah doesn't just say from humanity. He says, min ibadi, from my servants. So you can see that tenderness and the love of Allah. So just, I just wanted to, for all of us to think about these two ways of looking at the same reality. Because, you know, there's an expression in English, a cup, is it half full or half empty? When you have some water in it, one way of looking at it is half full. And another way is half empty. So Iblis, his way of looking at human, humanity, he's proud of that majority that is going to be uh, ungrateful. But Allah is proud of the minority and he highlights the minority. So look at how a shift in perspective of the same reality, there are different ways of expressing the same reality. But it makes a dramatic difference in, in outcome and in the lessons you derive from that. And this, this verse was so important and I'll end with that. Uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, as our Mawlana Islahi used to remind us of this story a lot. Um, Umar, he was walking and he saw a man make dua. And his dua was, Allahumma ja'alni min al-qaleel. Allah, make me among the few. And Umar got angry. He was very surprised. Why would someone ask Allah to make them among the few? So he waited till that person was done and he questioned him. And he said, what, what kind of dua is that? What were, you, what were you asking for? And the man said, you know, سَمِعْتُ قَوْلَ اللَّهِ وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ He said, I heard the statement of Allah, this statement, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِيَ الشَّكُورِ And he says, أَدْعُوا اللَّهِ أَنْ يَجْعَلَنِي مِنْ أُولَٰئِكَ الْقَلِيلِ And I began to make dua from that moment to make me among those few. And Umar was so impressed. He was initially angry. But then he became so impressed and he said, Kullu nasi a'lam min Umar. He said, every person knows more than Umar. That's his humility. So this is a great lesson. Just by looking at, if you do tadabbur of verses that are similar, that are talking about the same reality, you learn so much insight from in between the lines and from the way Allah speaks. So we need to imbue the speech of Allah. So may Allah give us tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alam.